When you're the best in the industry, you don't just set the standard, you become the one everyone turns to when things go wrong. And right now, SpaceX is without question the most capable and reliable spaceflight company on Earth. So whenever another agency or company hits a wall, it's SpaceX that ends up becoming the emergency solution. That's exactly what's happening again, and this time, the situation is much more serious than people think. Before we go any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates. Russia suddenly found itself in a situation they haven't faced in decades. They could no longer launch any Soyuz crew capsules or progress cargo ships to the International Space Station. Their only functioning launch pad for these vehicles suffered serious damage during the most recent mission. This wasn't cosmetic damage or a minor fault. Large structural sections of the pad were damaged by exhaust, heat, and vibration during liftoff. The deeper issue is that this launch site was originally built in the early 1960s. Soviet engineers designed it during the era of the Vostok and early Soyuz programs. Because so much of the pad is built around outdated designs, engineers can't simply order replacement parts. Many components don't exist anymore. So Russia must either manufacture them from scratch or redesign them entirely. At first, Russia downplayed the problem and claimed repairs would be completed quickly. But once teams actually inspected the site, they admitted the truth that the pad will be offline for months. Realistically, many analysts say the damage is severe enough that the repair timeline could reach 9 to 12 months, possibly even longer if deeper structural problems are discovered. Russia has no operational backup pad for Soyuz or Progress, so this single failure shuts down their entire human spaceflight. This is where the situation becomes risky. A Soyuz spacecraft can only remain docked to the ISS for about 180 days before its fuel and battery systems degrade. That means Russian astronauts must return to Earth roughly every six months, using a fresh Soyuz spacecraft that arrives with the next crew. If Russia cannot launch a new Soyuz before the current capsule reaches its 180-day limit, the Russian crew could be stranded without a certified return vehicle. This is where SpaceX steps in because right now, Crew Dragon is the only spacecraft NASA has that is ready for human rescue missions. You might wonder how the United States ended up with only one working spacecraft even though it has been in the space business for decades. The reason goes back to the Space Shuttle. The shuttle flew for about 30 years and did almost everything, but it also had serious safety problems. Two missions ended in disasters, Challenger in 1986 and Columbia in 2003, and NASA lost 14 astronauts. After the Columbia accident, NASA decided the shuttle was too risky and too expensive to keep flying. So in 2011, the shuttle program ended, leaving the U.S. with no way to send astronauts to space. NASA had to rely completely on Russia's Soyuz capsules for almost nine years. Every American astronaut flew to the ISS on Soyuz, and Russia charged up to $90 million per seat. This made NASA realize how dangerous it was to depend on another country, especially one with unpredictable politics. To fix this, NASA started the Commercial Crew Program. They chose three companies, Boeing with the Starliner capsule, SpaceX with Crew Dragon, and Sierra Space with Dream Chaser. Boeing received the most money, over $4 billion, because they were seen as the safe option with decades of experience. But Boeing struggled right from the start. Starliner's first big test in 2019 failed because of serious software mistakes. The spacecraft's internal clock was wrong by hours, so it fired its engines at the wrong time and used too much fuel. It couldn't reach the ISS. Later, engineers found another software bug that could have caused the spacecraft to collide with its own service module during separation. Both issues showed how unsafe the system was. When Boeing tried again in 2021, the flight didn't even get off the ground. Dozens of valves in the propulsion system were stuck shut. Moisture had reacted with the chemicals inside the valves, basically cementing them in place. Boeing had to take the entire spacecraft apart and fix the system, which took many months. After that came more problems. Wiring issues, parachute concerns, and even flammable tape inside the spacecraft, something that is not allowed in human spaceflight at all. 
NASA kept waiting because Boeing had already received more than $4 billion and was supposed to be the reliable partner. But the biggest problem came during the crewed test flight in 2024. Two NASA astronauts flew Starliner to the ISS. The launch worked, but once the spacecraft was in space, several of its small steering thrusters failed. Some thrusters overheated, others lost pressure, and NASA had to switch to backup thrusters just to keep the spacecraft under control. Then engineers discovered multiple helium leaks in the propulsion system. Helium is needed to pressurize the fuel tanks, so losing it is a major safety risk. Because of these issues, NASA didn't allow Starliner to bring the astronauts home. The capsule was judged too unsafe for re-entry. Instead of staying a week, the astronauts had to remain on the ISS for months. NASA eventually announced they would return to Earth on SpaceX's Crew Dragon instead. This meant Starliner could launch astronauts, but wasn't trusted to land them safely. Starliner had to be sent back to Earth empty. For NASA, this was the final sign that the spacecraft wasn't ready for regular missions. After nearly a decade of delays and more than $5 billion spent, Starliner still had critical problems. That's why NASA removed it from future crew rotations. It is no longer considered a dependable spacecraft. Dream Chaser also had its own difficulties. The idea is great, a small space plane that lands on a runway, but development has taken much longer than expected. The structure needed redesigns, its heat protection system took years to finish, and it relies on ULA's Vulcan rocket, which also faced long delays. Dream Chaser still has not flown to space, and NASA is only using it for cargo, not astronauts. The crew version is far behind and won't be ready anytime soon, so if something goes wrong, Dragon becomes the only real option. Crew Dragon has already flown astronauts more than 13 times, carrying over 50 people into orbit since 2020. Every single mission has returned safely. The spacecraft can stay docked to the ISS for up to 210 days, which gives NASA a longer safety margin compared to Russia's Soyuz, which must come back after about 180 days due to battery and fuel limits. The rocket that launches Dragon, the Falcon 9, is also a major reason NASA relies on SpaceX. Falcon 9 has completed more than 350 launches with a success rate above 99%. No other rocket in the world flies as often. SpaceX can launch multiple missions in one week, and they've even done two launches within one day. Here's how a rescue would actually work. NASA would tell SpaceX to prepare a Dragon capsule for emergency crew transport. Dragon normally flies four astronauts, but it has room for up to seven seats. For a rescue, NASA can add extra seats so Russian cosmonauts can fit inside. SpaceX already trains for this scenario. Once the spacecraft is ready, Falcon 9 launches Dragon from Florida. It takes about nine minutes to reach orbit. After that, Dragon performs a series of maneuvers to approach the ISS. Docking usually takes around 20 to 24 hours depending on the station's orbit. When Dragon docks, the Russian astronauts simply move into the capsule. When NASA approves the trip home, Dragon undocks from the station and performs a deorbit burn. The burn lasts around 10 to 15 minutes, slowing the spacecraft enough to fall back into Earth's atmosphere. After re-entry, Dragon deploys parachutes and lands in the ocean, usually near Florida. Recovery teams reach the capsule within minutes and bring the astronauts to shore. This entire process is already proven. SpaceX has done more than a dozen crew returns, and each one has been smooth. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.